Um, hopefully you are doing great. So today lesson, I'm going to show you how to spread the uh, screen vertically. Um, and I'm going to explain for you why do we need to do that. So first of all, um, because in the video, maybe you can hear some noise, you know, um, I'm recording the video after working hours. So, you know, family member coming home. And so that's, we can have some background noise, but I don't think it as affects much to the audio quality. So just ignore it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so why do we need to use why? Uh, for example, uh, you can see on my screen now, uh, for example, I click on the form here and what I want to do that I want to click on the active button here. But by default, the active button is not in the view box. So if you fail, so let me show you why it's failed first and then you will see uh, how can we fix it, okay? So to interact with this active button, we need to uh, locate, uh, we need to get the selector of that active button, okay? So let's try to manually Try to scroll up a little on your phone here and then try to re refresh the stroke here from the APM desktop. So click on the active button. You see we have the content description here is button active. So I'm going to copy that value and then uh, copy and then declare in the test script. So you right click on the API folder and try to create, uh, create a new JavaScript file uh, with something like spy vertical okay yeah yeah there's a typo on the the name but it doesn't matter as long as you can understand that it is y vertical so uh, I'm going to declare uh, the right um, clock here with the name that the uh, learning spy uh vertically and i have a text script clock here with the name source y vertically yeah okay right so i need to declare uh active button let me try to find out what we are going to do first okay so we are going to click uh first we need to click on the form icon First step, click on form icon. And then we want to click on the act, uh, active button. So to click on the active button, we need to declare the active button selector value here. So constant active button equal and the value. And we already have the form icon in another script here. So just copy and then paste here. So first step, we need to click on the form icon, right? So here, dollar sign and form icon screen. Then call the API click. The next step that we need to click on the active button here. Dollar sign form icon is not form icon should be active button. And we click right. So try to run this test script first and see what happened. So you open the tech configuration, tech configuration file and then try to replace with the new text script name. In this case, should be at the ABI folder and then the name space Y vertical. Let me refactor the name easier. Uh, spy vertical here, right? Just copy it, uh, refactor. Here. And we already have the FDM server started when we are going to to use the uh, the FDM desktop tool here. So we don't need to start the FDM server manually again. Just try to run the command and pm test and the tech configuration file here.
So it's now launched the uh, application, click on the form, and then try in to find the button at the but it will be failed because you see it's because ele element wasn't found. Actually, we have that element, but the element is not in the view box. So is the uh, is it unable to interact with the element? So how can we deal with that problem? So let me try to uh, show you how how can we do it manually first, and then we try to reflect it in our our automation test uh, step. Okay, so we click on the form, and then we will press here. You see my uh. You see my cursor here on the screen. I will press here. It will be in the middle, right? It's not the middle of the screen, but it's the it's a middle line here. So I put it here in the middle. And now I will press it and then wait a little. Then I will scroll up here and I will release my uh, my cursor, my feature, and then I see the active pattern so for in the uh, in other cases it may be more complex but in this particular case so we need to touch here around 90 percent of the screen height you see screen height here 90 percent and then i will press it wait a little and then i will move to where move to here it's around 10 percent of the height and then i release so that means i view uh, successfully uh, uh, spy up the, the screen. So let's try to reflect in our uh, test script. So the first, uh, the first step is click on the form icon and the second step should be something uh, swipe up, okay? Swipe up vert vertically. So uh, first thing we need to get the screen haze uh, value. So how to get it? I'm going to destruct uh, the haze uh, property from uh, driver dot get window size here, and we will have uh, a property with the name haze here. We have width and haze, but in this case, uh, because we are going to spy up. So we just need to get the, the height. And next thing we need to choose an anchor. So what's it, an anchor? Anchor is uh, where I need to push my finger on the screen. So the anchor, as I explained for you, that I will put inside the middle line here. So it's feel uh, around 50%, 50%, right? 50% of the width, so it should be 50%. So it should be anchor percentage is fifty percent, right? And then uh, the stock bond should be stock uh, stock bond percentage. So what is the stock bond percentage? Uh, the stock bond percentage here it should be around here. So it around ninety percent of the screen age. You see ninety percent. So put it here ninety. And the last one that should be the end point percentage, and it's around uh, ten percent of the screen height here, just ten percent. Okay. So uh, now uh, I need to calculate the the final value. It's because it's just percentage, but I need to find out the final pixel where I need to put on the screen. So the constant anchor here equal the height of the screen. And then I will multiply with uh, the anchor percentage and divide by 100, right? And then constant uh, stock for equal height multiple with the stock point percentage and then I divide by 100. And the last one will be the end point will be height 
multiple by n point percentage and divide by 100. So now we are going to use the touch perform ABI. So just call the global uh, object with the name driver, then call the method touch perform. So what's inside a touch perform, you can see from IDE subsection, it's an array, but an array of what? An array of actions. So we need an action, right? So we need to do something like uh, press, and then we wait one second, and then we move to uh, press on, on start point. And then we wait, we move to uh, end point, and then we release, right? So we are going to simulate exactly what we are, we are doing here on uh, manually on the screen, right? Yeah. So first we need to specify an object here, right? And the first object will be has the property action with the name that is pressed and we have options and we put as uh, as location it should be the anchor so where we put our feature and the second property white it should be stock stock point here right so the second action is uh, another object it should be uh, something let me see uh something wrong here it's not here let's see here second object action and the name should be weight right and the options is uh millisecond 1000 that means we wait for uh, one second before doing uh, the next step. So another object, the next step, that is the action uh, move to, okay? Move to, and we have option uh, like S should be the anchor. So that's mean we are not going to change the, the straightaway here, we keep it here in the anchor in 50% of the width. So the anchor will be S, okay? And the Y will be uh, end point here, right? And the final one should be release action. Action uh, release. And we will have nothing for the option, right? So, uh, before before we run the, the test script, let me share with you one thing. So here, before you run the test perform, if you run, it will not do anything. Because you need to do something on the screen first, so you need to click on something that will not affect to your application. So in this case, I'm going to click on the form components, okay? touch on it first, and then I will call the touch perform action. Okay, that will be safe for us. So let us see, we have, we need to declare another uh, element with the name that's the form uh, history, from history test equal, and let me inspect the, let me inspect the uh, element. Let's refresh the resource. <clears throat> hmm? Okay, let's just close it and then stop it again. Stop the session. <clears throat> it's coming. So let's click on the form and then refresh the resource here. 
here let inspect this form element this form element uh, the form component is uh, it has the content description as the form screen let's copy that that value then go back to our script put it here right and then before doing this we need to touch on the screen so touch on screen before doing touch action if not this will be failed okay so we are going to call the form icon not form icon uh, should be form header from header text and then we click that means we tap on the screen and then we call the touch perform here after that we um we are going to click on the active button, right? So uh, let's check the tech configuration file again. So we already have the script here. So let's trigger the up. Let's trigger the command here, npm test, and we specify the tech configuration file, enter. Let's see. Uh, technically, it should work. Yeah, it's work. So now, uh, now you, uh, now you know how to swipe the the the, the screen vertically. Here, yeah, you see, vertically, that means you just why something like that. So in the real case, um, there's something I need to, to tell you. Um, in the real case, in your application testing, you you should specify some, you create a, a util, uh, utility function and you can call it everywhere, but it is just an example for you to understand the, uh, the API. So, in other lesson, I will uh, share you how to create a utility function and then you can use it globally in the test script because you know if you copy, uh, if you need to touch perform somewhere else and then you copy and then you paste there, so it's not good. So um, in other lesson, I will tell you how to try to swipe uh, uh, horizontally. That means we will swipe something like this. So we try to understand this lesson first and then in the next lesson, it will be easier for you. So just keep learning and bye for now.